So hi, welcome to Encurter Reviews on episode of After the Credits on Encurter Reviews. This is Tyler from Encurter Reviews. And this is special guest Luke. Yep. And again, not in the backseat of a car this time. Yep. And we are continuing talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We are talking about Phase 2 of the MCU. Now these movies, of course, include Iron Man 3, Thor the Dark World, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. Now, like we said before, we're going to try to keep the time as good as possible in that, to kind of keep up pacing and such so they don't go on for too long. So anyway, we are going to talk about Iron Man 3. So Iron Man 3 is not directed by John Favreau, this one is directed by Shane Black, who's directed some movies I like, such as Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and The Nice Guys, and he's directing that new Predator movie coming out. So anyway, Iron Man 3 is a movie where pretty much Tony is being um, is trying to create these other suits, and this one infamous one that keeps like malfunctioning and falling apart consistently, and pretty much there's this new villain called the Mandarin, played by Ben Kingsley, and he's causing a bunch of terrorist attacks to happen, and Tony's house got, gets blown up, and meanwhile, there's another villain who is known as um, Killian, played by Guy Pierce. And in the midst of this, he's trying to figure out how to defeat these villains. And I gotta say that um, for a while, The Incredible Hulk, I consider to be the worst MCU movie, this topped it. I swear, Iron Man 3 is the worst MCU movie out there because there's so many problems with it. And I'll let you uh, take it from here, Luke. Yeah, I, I despise this movie, and and um, I rem it's just it's also just so disappointing because I remember seeing the trailers and I'm like, wow, this actually could be like the Dark Knight of the Iron Man movies because the Mandarin looked so good. I love Ben Kingsley, and I'm like, okay, he's gonna be a great villain. I was expecting like him to be like this awesome like terrorist villain, just like just tearing Tony apart. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, I don't know if it's, we're gonna get there yet, but like the the twist I think is the biggest thing that ruined it for me because the Mandarin is like the Joker. He's like Iron Man's Joker. He's like his biggest villain and mm -hmm. they just completely wasted him. And I get some people are like, oh, I like that they decided to turn on its head. And I'm like, no, I just, I didn't like it at all. And yeah, this is like the main villain for Iron Man. If this was mm -hmm. like a D-list villain, then it would be fine. But no, okay. I mean, of course, also the Mandarin has like these powerful rings and also I heard yeah. he's kind of an alien. But wait, Thanos is an alien. We established that aliens exist and other magical stuff happens. So how come he couldn't make the Mandarin like this? Why is he kind of Nolanized well, yeah, he, in I mean, some he's aspects? Yeah, part of the Ten Rings, which is the, the, the guys from the first movie were the, the Ten Rings clan. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I noticed that when I rewatched Iron Man years ago. But yeah, I mean, also um, Aldrich Killian is, like, guess kind of the Mandarin. He's which like a nerd. He starts off as, like, a weird nerd, and then he, like, ends up wanting to get revenge or something i mean people have brought up a great point by saying that this movie is a ripoff of the incredibles think about it um, yeah. aldrich killian's character is syndrome where he's like looking up to iron man kind of like how syndrome looked up to mr incredible and he rejects him and he's like oh yeah i'm real wealthy now and i want to get back at you and that sort of thing and they both got black friends with super suits <laughs> <laughs> that's what um i think how it should have ended pointed that out which was great but there are so many plot holes in this movie. I mean, the main thing, why it's so problematic for not just the previous Iron Man movies, but the rest of the MCU, is that, okay, so Tony's house got blown up and it's attacked and he doesn't find out about it until it's on the news. Jarvis can detect many airplanes flying miles high in the sky in the first Iron Man movie, but could not detect three airplanes, I mean, helicopters coming at him. In a joke, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well... I guess Jarvis is going to blame this on a YouTube video. But yeah, I mean, and the thing is, like, remember the house party protocol that comes up in the, thir in the third act? Why didn't Where he do that, that in the fir in the beginning of the film when his house got blown up and that? Yeah. That would be a perfect time to do the house party protocol. I mean, I swear, this scene is so flawed. It's kind of like that scene from Attack the Clones where um, Obi-Wan jumps out on that drone where there's so many problems with this scene, why it doesn't work. Yeah. It's so badly written. I mean, there are some parts in this movie I do like. For example, he saves those people falling from the that plane. airplane. Yeah, that was a great scene. And he's also, like, get, having a suit to appear in. Like, one, two, come on! 
and the and the guards are like not impressed. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're just bluffing here. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's other big issues with this movie because I heard that Pepper Potts was originally supposed to die, and they're like, nah, we're gonna let her live. I mean, her wearing the suit was like actually a reference to the comics where she gets her own suit and becomes a character named Rescue. And, uh, I mean, that, that was just a little nod, but, yeah, I mean, maybe if, I could see why they didn't kill her off, but she, if she did die, I don't think it would have affected that much later on. Yeah, it was super cringeworthy that she was the one that defeated Aldrich Killian. Yeah. It's kind of like if Alfred defeated Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. I thought she was weird when she got the extremis, like, she, she, like, did she inject herself with her? She got subjected to the extremis and, like, she was like burning through people i was like okay this is weird yeah i mean i think the script kind of made it the stuff up as they went along with the powers of what they could and could not do but also um war machine is now iron patriot yeah and this is so forgettable and laughable they just forgot about this and he kind of reminded me of that buzz lightyear toy that was like patriotic colored (laughs) in a way (laughs) and also i could tell this movie wasn't going to be very good because the first two movies started with an ACDC song. Yeah, no ACDC. It's just some generic Alpha 65. Score. Yeah, I'm blue, da ba dee ba ba die song. What? And also, wasn't there a part in the beginning of the film where he's introduced to that guy who he later, later yeah. met in the first in Iron Man movie in that cave? Why didn't he remember him when he met him? Like, when do you, wouldn't you think that one of them would have said, Oh, yeah, didn't we meet before at, at this party? Well, actually, he does. I mean, do you remember in the first Iron Man when he says, he's like, I met you before at a party? He actually references it. I don't remember that. I forgot about it, too, until I rewatched it. And he's like, he's like, I, I didn't say anything, but I've I've met you before. And, yeah, there's a well, reference to it. Okay, maybe my video where I explain why this movie is criminally overrated, I'm going to have to delete that part where I look stupid. <laughs> All right, good one. Thank you, Luke. Um... But yeah, I mean, I do think a huge problem with this movie is the fact, besides of its tone clash with too much comedy stuff and trying to appeal too much to the kids, especially that part where this one boy he interacts with who, I don't know, I felt like he was as expendable and forgettable as um, Selena Kyle's assistant in The Dark Knight Rises, where they were both not needed at all for the story, but also the... um, The fact that, okay, there's been a bunch of terrorist attacks have happened, and Iron Man's house got blown up, and the President of the United States got kidnapped, and where are the Avengers? Where is S.H.I.E.L.D.? That's the biggest problem that they have to face after the first Avengers movie is, like, basically all their problems can be solved with the Avengers coming in. We're S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, they have to write around it and be like, well, they were busy, they were off doing something else. But they never acknowledge it. That's That's the big problem with it. And if I was in charge of the MCU, I'd just completely disregard this as canon. And I feel like the MCU would be much better off if this was just forgotten about. Kind of like the Incredible Hulk in a way. I mean, it wouldn't affect anything because this one's so standalone. Like, it doesn't really affect anything at all. I don't know. I think the biggest problem was... I mean, I like Shane Black, but I think the biggest problem was hiring him to do this because I feel like he wasn't a good fit for the MCU just because it just... Like, I know he had, like, the whole PTSD thing from Avengers, but besides that, it doesn't really have any bearing on the MCU. Yeah, that that whole part was, that subplot was pretty pointless because he easily overcomes it. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it make more sense if he got the PTSD from the first Iron Man movie when he actually saw Mm -hmm. people getting blown up and also when he gets hit by the shrapnel? And I felt like that would have made more sense in a way. Yeah, I mean, he gets the the thing taken out of his body. The he gets the stuff removed from his body permanently in this. So like now he only needs the arc reactor to power his suits. And I don't understand why he blows up all his suits at the end. And yeah, then, it like, makes the no movie, damn sense. The next movie in, in Avengers: Age of Ultron, he's back and he's like, "Yeah, forget it, that all just happened. I just made more suits." Yeah, when he's like, "I quit being Iron Man," shows Avengers: Age of Ultron plays the curb your enthusiasm music. <laughs> 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 And also, it's like, okay, he got surgery done and removed the shrapnel from his chest. Why didn't he do that in the second movie and spend all that time trying to create a new element? This is, it just makes no damn sense at all. It's just so problematic. It makes no damn sense. Also, he's barely Iron Man in the movie. Like, he's only in the suit for, like, not very long. Yeah. Just a few scenes. Yeah. So what would you give this movie, Luke? Uh, um... I definitely I if not the worst I think it's maybe the second worst like it either two or one for the worst so 
yeah, I just, there's a lot of problems with it. I just, I remember, I actually don't know why, but I saw it a second time because my sister hadn't seen it yet and I regretted it. I'm like, I don't want to watch this again. <laughs> it was disappointing and bad. So uh, I think I'd probably give it a three or a four out of ten just because I don't think it's very good. Yeah, I agree. This is a movie that I kind of liked more than Iron Man 2 when I first saw it, but thinking about it, this is the worst of not just the Iron Man trilogy, but the MCU in general. I hated the plot twist with the Mandarin. I don't understand why S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers are not in it. And also, there are so many story problems in just the Iron Man trilogy in general, in its tone and some of the consistencies and also inconsistencies with it. So overall, I give Iron Man 3 about a very low and weak two stars out of four. Okay. So now we have Thor The Dark World. Usually this is one that's called one of the worst MCU movies in certain ways. So pretty much Thor The Dark World, there's these elves called the Dark Elves and... You mean Teletubbies? Yeah. <laughs> they had the demonic Teletubbies in that. And they're like all pale except... All pale like looking except they have one black guy for some reason in there. But anyway, they are creating this kind of weird looking like kool-aid looking red <laughs> stuff and that sort of thing another you know infinity stone MacGuffin, and pretty much i guess they're attacking asgard and um they free loki to try to help him out and there's some you know thor's like um lackeys who are there but also they're kind of not liking the fact that jane foster's there especially um lady sif or mm -hmm. or whatever played by Jamie Alexander, I think her name is, and yeah. yeah, she is she is more attractive than Natalie Portman. I understand why he doesn't go for her. It's true. Just saying, and um, also Kat Dennings in it more and more quips than that, and I can understand why more people had more of a backlash in a way, but I think she's I don't mind Kat Dennings at all. I think she's funny and hot, like I said in the first Thor movie we talked about. But yeah, I mean, I do think in ways it's kind of better than the first one because more stuff is happening and we actually spend mm -hmm. more time in asgard but at the same time i do think yeah the villain is pretty forgettable i think he's one of the worst villains in mcu yeah again i think this is the movie that kind of got people to say like well the mcu has a villain problem yeah in that but what do you think of thor the dark world yeah i agree i do think that because they spend a lot of the time in asgard that that part i like about it but um Loki as a villain in the first one was much better than Malekith, I think his name was. Uh, he, I mean, he's just like, his character, I mean, he doesn't have a character. He's just a guy that wakes up and he's like, I want to destroy everything. And then there was, I mean, I like the portal fight at the end when they're like jumping through portals. But besides that, I thought he just really contributed nothing. Um, I, I like the scene when like they're all in like the ships in the beginning. It's kind of felt like a little Star Wars-y to me when they're in the Asgard ships. Uh, yeah, Kat Dennings, I found irritating in this. Uh, uh, and then, was it this movie that they recast Fandral? Uh, the, I the guess, so, yeah, or he, some of them. Yeah, he like he was now played by uh, the guy that's playing Shazam. I can't think of his name. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, he's playing Shazam now. Um, but, I mean, they were, the, the Warriors 3 were not that important either. Yeah, Jamie Alexander... She, yeah, I think she's great. Um, yeah, I think um, I heard that she um, almost died or got injured badly during like really? the action sequences because I guess you know she's in high heels fighting uh -huh. and I guess she kind of tripped down some stairs and that and I heard the reason why Natalie Portman was didn't really want to be in this movie because I think originally the got the not the not the guy sorry the director of Wonder Woman eventually who directed wonder woman originally was supposed to direct this movie but i guess they got a different director who was more on the ball with the mcu who eventually directed terminator genesis and i guess she was pretty disappointed and also um was it uh i can't believe I forgot his name you know from pacific rim we're canceling the apocalypse and idris elba yeah idris elba yeah he plays you know the uh, gatekeeper yeah. you know the doorkeeper and that i heard that he doesn't like the role that he plays, and he has, he said that he kind of desires to leave the MCU and go to the DCEU, and if that happens, I'm crossing my fingers like, please be Green Lantern, please be Green Lantern, yeah, please John be Green Stewart. Lantern. Yes, that would be awesome. 
I would love to see that kind of switch happen. But yeah, I mean, this is a kind of forgettable in a way. I mean, they kind of made it interesting with, um, look like Loki died. And I feel like that was interesting, but then at yeah. the end, it was that plot twist of like, I tricked you, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting in certain ways. But yeah, I don't think I have much to say about this movie. It's yeah, kind it's of just kind of there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty forgettable. I know we spend usually about ten minutes in each ones, but I don't know. I feel like there's not that much to talk about it. Um, so what would you give this movie, Luke? Um, yeah, it's very forgettable. Uh, but I think like Loki is the best part about it still, of course, because Tom Middleton's great. Um, I think I'd give it a five out of ten, just because I. I mean, I don't think it's terrible, but it's not really, really memorable at all. Yeah, I uh, definitely agree. I mean, in certain ways, I do think it's better than the first movie because we spend more time in Asgard. And also, well, I know I'm the, I'm the minority on this, but, you know, I did enjoy Kat Dennings in that. I think she's kind of funny. Also, I liked how she actually has someone who actually wants to get with her because, you know, she's single in that. <laughs> um, but also, again, the villain is pretty generic and pretty forgettable and average. And it does have his moments, like you said, the whole part with the portal and Thor's hammer. So yeah. overall, I give Thor the Dark World about two to two and a half stars out of four. So yeah, by this point in time, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like Phase 2, was not looking pretty good. But then we got Captain America, the Winter yeah. Soldier. In this one, Captain America is trying to, you know, stay in shape and also working for S.H.I.E.L.D., doing these certain missions. And also, I felt like it was really sad when he's visiting... Um, Peggy Carter, she's like really old and mm -hmm. she suffers from like Alzheimer's and that was a really sad scene but also in contrast to that I thought it was pretty funny when he's um, looking at stuff like you know things to catch up on and he <laughs> sees Star Wars on there and I'm like whoa. He's Did you gonna... know that list is different depending on what country you see that movie in? Oh I didn't like know if that. You, if you see it in like France or something the list will be different than you see it here. It's pretty cool. Yeah it's kind of like how in certain movies like Zootopia I think the um certain animals are kind of different depending on which country it's in and relating to the mcu how they have an entire scene that was added for the chinese version of yeah Iron Man three yeah for the um chinese market of course yeah. but yeah i mean i do think that um and also there's a new villain known as the winter soldier from captain america's past and pretty much it seems like there are certain some fishy stuff that's going on with shield that we eventually find out about so what did you think of Captain America, The Winter Soldier? I think this is an excellent movie. Like Even outside of the MCU, just as a movie itself, I think it's really good. Um, I thought the villain, I mean, Winter Soldier, you could argue that there's two villains because you got the Winter Soldier and then there's uh, Pierce played by Robert, Robert Redford. Redford. Yeah, who I was convinced for a long time, I'm like, he's going to turn out to be the Red Skull. I thought he was going to take off his face and it was going to be Red Skull underneath and like just recasted. But, of course, that didn't happen. But um, I felt it was very, like, a 70s political thriller. Um, it had things that I wasn't expecting. It was, it definitely, it turned the entire MCU on its head when they revealed that S.H.I.E.L.D. is basically Hydra, and Hydra's been living in it the whole time. So, and I was surprised because the directors were the direct, the people who, behind Community, who's, like, a comedy series. And I'm Didn't like, they also direct uh, You, Me, and Dupree? Yeah. So, like, they, they're, they're... <laughs> Their definitely past, a step up <laughs> it's surprising that they are the successful that now they're they have the they're the directors that have the most marvel movies under their belt now so I yeah they did a wonderful job yeah pretty good stuff i mean i do like how the winter soldier is a pretty good villain also like the fight scenes in the movie they're well choreographed yeah. i mean yeah there's a little bit of uh paul greengrass-esque shaky, shaky cam like in the Bourne sequels i'm not a big fan of i mean it's better than those ones and yeah, I mean, I do like how they kind of hint at a villain that we eventually see in Phase 3, you know, Crossbones, but we'll get to him later. But yeah, I do like the um, the elevator fight scene was yeah. really good. That was probably one of my favorite moments in the MCU in general, where just yeah, it's a pretty well um, intense fight scene in such a really small, like, area. And also, um, someone pointed out that one of the henchmen in that elevator fight scene was in Batman vs. Superman as oh, yeah, the uh, one of the like the leader of that gang yeah. so that was kind of funny it's like upgraded from uh side henchman to main henchman mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah i mean i do like how in the movie itself how we do see um 
he goes back to a certain base and they do kind of hint at black widow and captain america but it doesn't go anywhere mm -hmm. it's like okay i know you're still hung up on peggy carter but just go for her <laughs> okay um well then they introduce her uh is it her nie niece or right. granddaughter Grand I, something like that. i'm trying to remember sharon carter something like that um but yeah i mean also with this movie i think what's interesting about it with um hydra being with shield it kind of does i think it's a movie that i kind of reflects on how people have talked about like the deep state in governments yeah. and how you know it kind of sometimes it can get out of control and how it can do questionable things and it kind of you know kind of um who watches the watchman kind of scenario and yeah again pretty good action especially with the winter soldier and i do like how he's pretty silent and such and how he's talking to like the other villain in the movie and how the maid accidentally eavesdrops on him and he just has Shoot the him. winter yeah the winter soldier like kill her off and that and i feel like wow that's a seems like a pretty realistic scenario and and they do another fake out death where nick fury gets shot by a 50 cal sniper rifle and somehow lives like mm. they're like oh he's dead and then he comes back later yeah that was um actually twice because then his his suv gets blown up and that which was a really good car chase scene and yeah then, crying wolf here yeah and, but then also um we have a new hero named falcon and was mm -hmm. he played by again anthony mackie yeah i feel like he was pretty good as you know even though falcon's you know not one of the best heroes in the mcu i did like him in the movie how he was like running with captain america and he was like pretty much running laps around him mm -hmm. at one point and i do like how um gary shandling was it he was an iron man too yeah. and later the whisper like hell hydra and there's yeah, this whole meme. meme yeah all the memes and that like um caesar from that planet of the apes movie whispered in james franco's character like hell hydra and then there's the oscars one where i think uh leo dicaprio was like whispering in matthew mcconaughey's ear there's a lot of them <laughs> that was great um, but also they did briefly mention Doctor Strange. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, he was he was listing off like names of people that were of interest to Hydra and he says Stephen Strange just throws that in there. So would Doctor Strange predate this movie then? That's what I was thinking, but I don't think so because he Stephen Strange was he, he said that their like protocol uh clued them in on people that were like possibly in the future going to be important. So I think they knew about him as the surgeon, not not necessarily the, the sorcerer. Yeah, I just feel like that was kind of odd in a way, kind of Easter egg. I'm kind of blanking on the rest of this movie, but I think kind of like Thor The Dark World, I think we pretty much said what we want to say about it, but um, what would you give this movie, Luke? Uh, I think it's in the upper echelon of the Marvel movies. Um, definitely up there with the first Iron Man, and I, th I th actually think it's the best if maybe second best of phase two uh i'd give it an eight out of ten okay i personally think that this is a pretty good movie i think it's one of those rare sequels that's better than the first one but mm -hmm. i kind of prefer the first one in certain ways but i do think this one in general is better i do like how the scenarios of captain america i do like the antagonists in the movie i do like that um elevator fight scene the first you know fight sequence of the film and yeah the movie did cry a wolf a bit with nick fury and that sort of deal but overall i give captain america the winter soldier about three stars out of four yeah and by this point in time it seemed like the mcu was definitely starting to shape up better with phase mm -hmm. two and the next one which was guardians of the galaxy this is another movie that was pretty much a gamble kind of like thor in a the way because yeah. yeah because again i mean some people have heard of thor but no one heard of the guardians of the galaxy mm -hmm. so pretty much guardians of the galaxy about um pretty much in another galaxy we have a man named peter quill played by chris pratt and he pretty much is trying to find this various MacGuffin. i think another infinity stone and these various other individuals are trying to capture this infinity stone and they get captured in prison and they team up and try to get this infinity stone back before this other alien guy from the Kree, I think it mm -hmm. is. He's trying to destroy this planet. And Guardians of the Galaxy was a movie when I saw it. I'm like, yeah, it was pretty funny and pretty good. So what would you think of 
Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I really enjoy just as just similar to the Avengers, like with just the the fun factor. It's fun to watch. Uh, another movie I was skeptical about the director James Gunn, who had only really done like I think he, he did like this series called PG Porn, which I was I couldn't believe. Like he, he did um tr- he was part of Trauma Interactive who did like uh Toxic Avenger, which is kind of ironic. But also, uh, um, the Scooby Doo live action. Oh, uh, <laughs> definitely not his best. Yeah, though. like that's the last thing he did really. And then there was this movie called Super he did with Rain Wilson. Um, so I was skeptical, but I think he took a property that no one, yeah, no one's really familiar with, and they they used the 2008 lineup of characters as opposed to the 1960s lineup of of the Guardians, and I thought he pulled off a really good job with this movie. Yeah, I know. I mean, I gotta say my favorite character of the Guardians of the Galaxy is Rocket, voiced by Bradley Cooper. And I gotta say, yeah. not not only is Rocket my favorite Guardians of the Galaxy character, but I think it's safe to say that he's my favorite character in the MCU because he's such a funny guy, but also he's really smart with all the gadgets he creates, and also he's pretty much kind of a hothead. He's like using all these weapons and that, and I just really like this character. He also looks pretty good with the visual effects. And yeah. also um, Groot, voiced by Vin Diesel, just, <laughs> I am Groot. I mean, it's funny is that it reminds me of the Iron Giant, that he voiced the Iron Giant in that movie, and how I understand Vin Diesel a lot more in voice acting than I do him in his live action <laughs> roles, like, which is weird. Yeah, I learned everything from my father. He's like Stallone. <laughs> no, Stallone is an English teacher compared to Vin Diesel. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, um, we also have Zoe Zeldana. Is that how you pronounce mm-hmm. her last name? That's Gamora. Okay. I know uh, Steven's got the hots for her in that. <laughs> um, I gotta say, this is a better movie where she plays an alien than Avatar. And I know yeah. some people will disagree with me on that. But yeah, that's an overrated movie. And this one's clearly better. And um, Batista plays another character. Drax. Okay, yeah. I remember there's a funny meme that someone showed where they showed the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy except it showed Chris Pratt where he's running but it looks like he's having a hard time running like he was trying to get into shape and then we show the Wicked Witch of the West and then we show that um, raccoon from Over the Hedge and then we show <laughs> uh, a uh, Pokemon as like one of the tree Pokemon and oh, then yeah. we show uh, Kratos from God of War and it said Guardians of the Galaxy was good <laughs> 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 yeah it's a pretty funny one and so many people are quoting this movie and I feel like there are some one-liners were kind of a miss, like when Chris Pratt called one character a ninja turtle. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, I know it's like a Disney property and that, but I feel like it was kind of strange in a way. Like, I know it's a Disney property, but there are some, like, adult jokes like, oh, you got my dick message message in that. Yeah, and the, and the Jackson Pollock painting thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, wasn't the um, ship called the Milano or whatever? Yeah, a reference to Alyssa Milano. And wasn't she in the ship as well as an alien? No, that wasn't her, but... Okay, I thought I read somewhere. It must have been some kind of rumor or whatever. But I just thought it was kind of interesting. And I think Stephen, if he was here, he would say, like, um, he would jokingly say, like, this whole movie was like, hey, kids, remember the 70s? Or, like, yeah, remember I mean, the yeah, 80s? But it makes sense with the plot, because, like, I mean... Peter Quill, the last time he was on Earth was the 80s, so that's all he knows, really. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, um, the actress who plays his mom, I heard that she was in the first Captain America movie as one of the dancers for, um, you know, Captain America's character. I can't believe I forgot to mention her in the first Captain America movie, but wasn't uh, Natalie Dormer in the first Captain America movie? It's like a very brief part, and it's like they kind of wasted her in a way. I don't remember. That. Oh yeah, we also forgot to talk about uh Tony Stark's grandfather or father. Oh yeah, Howard Stark. Yeah, in that one. But anyway, this just minor detour here, folks. Um, the villain in this movie was fine, I guess. I mean, a kind of step up from the Dark World, like the yeah. Dark Elves, but I just felt like he was kind of just. I'm an antagonist. Rawr. Yeah, but I mean, this movie is more about the heroes than the villain was kind of just there to be an obstacle. Yeah, I know, but that's kind of, in a way, sort of a problem. Yeah, well, a is. problem with the, not just the MCU, but even a lot of Disney animated movies. Where, yeah, it's nice you develop the characters and the heroes pretty well, but the villains 
kind of too much take a uh, a back seat a lot of times yeah. and they're not developed very well and there's also the you know surprise villain that's come up a lot and i feel like they should kind of balance it out more where you should give the villains not equal screen time but more development so you understand their character more if you look at if you kind of do a stopwatch timer for the villains and an mcu movie compared to other villains in movies by dc comics that there's a significant like stark difference in a way but yeah i mean also we had um karen gillian is it yeah as, uh, Angela, yeah Laura's sister yeah, I thought, I mean, I was kind of familiar with her because I remember I think I read a comic a while back with the Silver Surfer in that way, which, by the way, I'm still waiting on Silver Surfer to show up. And that it he's. Now, I think, because of the, the merger. Long overdue, folks. And he better say to me, my board, none of that crap from that one Silver, well, that Fantastic Four movie where he reaches for his, his surfboard and he doesn't say to me, my board. <laughs> that was one of the second worst thing. The worst thing was. Galactus is a giant space cloud, which was so <laughs> stupid. It makes no damn sense. Um, but yeah, they better get it right when they have uh, the Silver Surfer in the mm-hmm. MCU. And that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of. Oh, yeah, so we have Benicio del Toro. Yeah, as the, as the collector. What an interesting character. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of. Um, remember that Simpsons Trias of Horror episode where the. Um, I guess you know bart and lisa had these superpowers and comic book guy was the villain called the collector i think mm-hmm. which was kind of funny it just reminded me of that but also the post credit scene was howard the duck oh yeah <laughs> and also the collector is the brother of the grandmaster played by jeff goldblum oh that's kind of they're, they're cool. both elders of the universe oh so. yeah that's interesting um so anyway what would you give this movie luke uh i think this is really entertaining movie overall and yeah the villain is kind of just there not a big plot point but overall i think it's very entertaining um up there with winter soldier for in phase two for me uh, i think i'd give it a 7.5 out of 10 uh just for pure enjoyability yeah i agree i mean yeah the characters could have been better i feel like um they chris pratt really did knock it out of the ballpark for this one Mm -hmm. i know we forgot to mention glenn close and she was in it but it's like yeah i mean i heard she did just for the paycheck (laughs) and also john c Riley's in it too and he wasn't half bad but anyway i would say guardians of the galaxy is pretty entertaining for what it is not great but i did like this one so josh brolin's first appearance as thanos yep so overall i give guardians of the galaxy about three stars out of four all right, so now we have um, the big movie. I thought this was the end of the Phase 2 so one, but I. it's not, which is kind of odd. And this is Avengers Age of Ultron. So Avengers Age of Ultron is about they're trying to clean up all the Hydra remnants, and pretty much there's these other kind of superpowered characters who are um, Quicksilver and... Scarlet um, Witch. Scarlet Witch, yeah. Played by uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, not to be confused with the other Quicksilver in the X-Men franchise, yeah. which is kind of odd. And we also have... Um, Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, the uh, third Olsen, the triplet. The one that's actually a good actress. <laughs> and also the most attractive of the three. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and then also Tony tries to create a new program to kind of say like, well, maybe the Avengers shouldn't be around here forever and we should have some more help. And thus Ultron's created... And it's hilarious how he just spends one minute on the internet and realizes that, yeah. yep, humans need to go. <laughs> That's funny. And he's voiced by, who was it? James again? Spader. Yeah, pretty good choice. And he is trying to create a kind of technology and other devices to try to wipe out the Earth. He's pretty much Skynet from the Terminator movies with a personality. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this is the one that people either really like or don't like much of. But what do you think of Avengers Age of Ultron? Uh, I liked it for the most part, but I thought some of it was kind of a mixed bag. Um, mostly, I think it's because Joss Whedon actually had a longer cut of the movie and had to like cut a lot out. And I don't know if I like Ultron. Like, I thought Ultron was a little bit disappointing because um, he's almost too jokey. Like, I felt like he could have been like the Darth Vader of the MCU, where he's got like he could be very menacing. And I also found his weird, like, animated mouth a little off-putting because he's, like, a robot, but his mouth moves like a human. And they did that for, like, enunciation. 
But I liked how in the comics how his mouth doesn't move. It's just like a light that like turns on mm-hmm. and off when he talks. And they made him more like Tony because this was a creation basically by accident of Tony instead of the comics, which was it was he was made by Hank Pym. Um, yeah, true. Um, but yeah, I mean, I actually really like Ultron a lot as a villain. I think Ultron is one of the best villains in the MCU. And I feel like that's one aspect I will say that's better about the first Avengers movie is that I do feel like Ultron was a better villain than Loki was because Loki was kind of a pawn. Ultron was kind of like running the show in a way. And also I felt like there was a lot more stake at the climax of the movie compared to the first one in certain ways. But yeah, I, I do agree that, yeah, maybe he was a little bit too jokey at times. But I do like how he was very um, sinister in what his thoughts were. And even when he revealed his bad plan to Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, how he's like, yeah, I'm going to kill everybody. So what? <laughs> kind of deal. Um, yeah, pretty much. He probably read up on Nietzsche before he became <laughs> uh, the villain and such. And I do like how he taps into all these droids and such and the whole like, you know, there's no strings on me, like Pinocchio reference. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, one thing I do agree with a lot of people that off put me about it was the whole relationship between the Hulk and Black Widow was like, where did this, where did this yeah. come from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do like how he does, um, they show like how they calm down the Hulk and such. And I love that opening sequence where they're storming the Hydra base was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. A continuous cut. But also, I do like how there's a part in the movie where they show like Tony's fear of the Avengers dying. And we see like Thor lying dead. I remember uh, Steven was clapping because he doesn't like (laughs) Thor. And even when he was getting, Thor was being choked by Thanos, by not Thanos, but uh, Ultron. He was like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was a pretty funny, but also speaking of Thor, there's this whole part where he goes into this bath scene. Yeah. That was weird. That was, I felt like that should have been cut. From the movie, personally. That was personally. a big problem with this movie. Was they were trying to th- set up so many things. It was like so many parts just crammed into it. Kind of, kind of like Iron Man 2. True. In certain ways. But not as bad as Iron Man 2, I would add. And um, also we have a new character, Vision, played by... Um, Paul Bettany. Paul, I keep forgetting it, sorry. Paul Bettany. He also voiced... Um, Jarvis. Jarvis, yeah. So I thought it was interesting how he finally appeared. And mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of cool when they introduced him for the first time. And also... Again, the big climax of the movie, we see all the Avengers characters fighting, like, circled around, and it was pretty cool, and just seeing that happen on the big screen. But also, I like how, you know, uh, Thor's like, is that all you got? And then he's, there's more coming, yeah. and Captain America's like, you had to ask. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the Hulkbuster introduction. That oh, yeah, that scene. was, like, the best part of the movie, mm-hmm. I gotta say. And it was just hilarious how he's like, Punch him like go sleep, go sleep, go sleep, go sleep. It was like rock 'em sock 'em robots in a way. The way the arm was moving. <laughs> and I heard where they filmed that in like um, somewhere in Africa. They filmed it. They let them film there for weeks because I guess they weren't too picky with it in the filming locations and such. And also, um, yeah, I mean the effects were pretty good for the Hulkbuster. And looking forward to it coming back in the next Avengers movie, which I guess there were hints in that. But also the um they also introduce um Andy Serkis plays Claw, mm-hmm. is it? Ulysses Claw. Yeah, and I just felt like it was interesting how they're like quipping each other when they interact and such. And I like how Ultron is like saying, you know, Captain America's lecturing him like you're just gonna be causing war and that and Ultron's like, Well, you're pretty much the only reason why you exist is because of war. Yeah. And I love how he's like getting you know, quipping back and forth with him. And Tony's like, so what's in the suitcase? And he's like, oh, I guess this is the part where I explained to you my master plan. Then he just zaps him. And I'm like, yeah. "That w- I love that moment. Cause... And then he, he also blows off Claw's arm, which is like a direct reference to his his uh, arm cannon from the comics. Yeah, I also love how Quicksilver's running fast and he's like trying to catch Thor's hammer. And it's and, like... And it pulls him, <laughs> yeah. I also... Um, also, the part where they're trying to evacuate uh, Zakovia, is it? Mm-hmm. The part where Black Widow is hypnotizing people to go away. And I remember I saw this with Steven, and I told Steven, my joke was like, this is the probably the explanation why Furious 7 made so much money <laughs> at the box office. Uh, but also, um, 
There's a part I'm surprised they didn't cut from the movie is when, you know, Quicksilver is telling the police to get out of the place and he grabs like a automatic machine gun and shoots up in that. Yeah. Yeah, that was surprising. It's kind of surprised they kept that in. There wasn't much of a controversy or a backlash to it. And of course they kill him off, and which I kind of felt like was a cop out because instead of killing a character that has been there for like since the beginning, they mm-hmm. introduce a character and kill him because he's disposable. Yeah, I mean it kind of has a reference how in the beginning of the film where he stops like uh, um, Hawkeye's arrows and he's like, "You didn't see that coming," and then later when he saves them, it's like, "You yeah, didn't he... see that coming," and then he dies. And there's funny memes where it's like how Flash catches bullets no, and how Quicksilver yeah. catches bullets. And then it shows um, from Suicide Squad, Deadshot says Deadshot. Then it shows Quicksilver shot Ted. <laughs> like so many bad memes of that. Um, but yeah, I do like how like Nick Fury kind of showed up a bit. And he was jokingly saying like, man, Ultron's going to reproduce quicker than a Catholic rabbit. <laughs> but also I like the moment where um, we show um, Black um, Hawkeye's family and how like they're yeah. there and he ex- Thor actually crushes like a Lego thing and sweeps under the rug and I'm like or this couch I'm like that's pretty much me with um, Iron Man three, <laughs> hoping that MCU will and, do. And but they kind of sowed the seeds of Civil War. Oh yeah, and, like uh, Tony and Cap like were chopping wood and they were getting mad at each mm-hmm. other. I really like moments like that where it's like really subtle, where it's just you know characters talking, that I do appreciate that sort of deal. And it didn't feel forced at all. It actually felt natural, which I like, because in the first Avengers movie, they did kind of butt heads a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, like, take away that suit. What do you got? Well, I'm a mil- billionaire and super smart. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so what would you give this movie, Luke? Uh, yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, I didn't, don't think it reaches the heights of the first one, just because, I mean, that was the first time they all came together. But I did think it was uh, an enjoyable second movie probably the best they could have done in terms of a sequel to the avengers uh i think i would give it a seven out of ten okay personally i think the movie in certain ways is better than the first avengers movie but thinking about it now i mean there's parts about that could have been better in certain aspects and i did hear this movie kind of broke joss feet in a way because yeah. there was backlash for certain stuff and well maybe some stuff was kind of um understandable and i think it's kind of stupid where people complained about like oh where's black widow's movie or her action figure and that sort of thing but overall i give avengers age of ultron about three to three and a half stars out of four so finally for to complete the phase two of the mcu would be ant-man all right so ant-man is a movie about a man who's um i mean i'm trying to remember his name in the movie scott lang yeah played by paul rudd and he's a thief who's trying to get his life back together. And he figures with his other, um, hench- not henchmen, but his other colleagues. And one of them's played by Common, is it? Yeah. Or no. Uh, no, not Common. No, sorry. I can't believe it. It's T.I. T.I. Sorry. I, I can't believe I mixed those two up. Yeah, sorry about that. That's a brain fart, folks. And pretty much. And who is that one Hispanic guy? He's um, been in other movies. I can't think of his name. Luis is the name of the movie. Okay, so pretty much they try to steal like something that might be in this one guy's house, who's like Pim, played by um, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Sorry, I keep forgetting names in this movie. And he pretty much discovers the Ant Man suit, and pretty much he trains him how to use the Ant Man suit. And meanwhile, there is this one character eventually becomes Yellow Jacket, and he's developing this like uh, type of technology for Hydra and. Looking at this technology, I'm like, this is actually kind of a cool weapon. Just shrink people down. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm surprised they don't mass produce this as like an assassination weapon and that sort of deal. But um, what do you think of Ant-Man? Uh, I, I liked it a lot, but like, I'm when I heard about what happened with Edgar Wright, I was kind of concerned. And I think that's why this was the last movie in Phase 2. I think it was supposed to be Avengers 2, but the problems with it getting made. Because I guess the movie's been trying to get made for over like 10 years before this with Edgar Wright and there was creative differences so he got fired basically and then they got um I don't remember his name uh Peyton Reed who did like Yes Man he does like comedies to do this movie okay um but yeah I thought it was really good like for what they had because there was a lot of problems for it um 
even though like some of it seems a little generic and like the villain I thought was basically Obadiah Stane 2.0 because he's yeah. his mentor and then he turns bad. Um, overall, I thought it was I liked the shrinking effects because we hadn't really seen shrinking done with today's effects. We had, like last time we had really seen it was Honey I Shrunk the Kids and that was I mean that's pretty dated. Um, yeah. But, I mean the shrinking effects I think was the coolest part of the movie. Now yeah I mean here's what I see. Well, not just with Iron Man 3, but also I kind of find the hypocrisy of people who kind of go too easy on the MCU, but they kind of bash the DCU, where... Remember when people complained about Man of Steel by saying, like, oh, it was all the product placement in this movie? Oh, yeah. Ant-Man has a ton of product placement, okay? He's working at Baskin-Robbins. Yeah. We see a Samsung Galaxy phone. We see the Lifesavers and Thomas the Tank Engine, or Train Engine, whatever it's called nowadays. But, yeah, it's like, yeah, this movie had a lot of product placements where's the complaints for that that's what i was you know thinking about that sort of deal but it was kind of distracting in certain ways i do like paul rudd in this movie he was pretty funny mm -hmm. as the kind of underdog in a way um but also i mean yeah the villain was interesting design but again sadly another yeah. forgettable mcu villain and edgar wright should have probably could have made this movie a lot better than what it was and there's some parts in the story that was probably in the Edgar Allan Wright, Edgar Wright, sorry, not Edgar Wright story that um, made its way into the movie. Like the one part is like, oh, I was talking to my, you know, cousin and that. And yeah, it was kind of funny how they're yeah, lip syncing yeah. and that. Um, and also, uh, what's the actress in the movie? She was in Lost, I think. Uh, Evangeline Lilly. Yeah, who they hint at being Wasp next. Mm -hmm. And I guess they were kind of like training him and with the ant stuff and they're showing like he was doing that heist thing and i'm like yeah it was all right i guess i mean in certain parts of the movie it kind of reminded me of this is like kind of a tv movie in a way yeah. i mean some would argue like how i know it's kind of fighting words but it kind of reminded me a little bit of green lantern in a way where it felt more like this would be decent if it was on tv mm -hmm. and not really a theatrical movie it was a smaller budget for a marvel movie i mean because they didn't need as many effects it was very small scale i mean fittingly it's a small scale movie right after like the bombastic avengers 2 and the story was small about him and his daughter stuff like that yeah i agree i think um it's kind of all right i mean i don't think it's as memorable as a lot of the other mcu movies in certain yeah, ways it's kind of middle of the road i do think it was better when we see him later in that but anyway what would you give this movie luke um I think this movie is yeah the middle of the road for phase two. It probably could have been improved had Edgar Wright stayed on, um, but I suppose we'll probably never see that. Um, but I think I'd probably give this six or six or six and a half out of ten. Okay, all right. So uh, I think this movie is pretty average and kind of a mixed bag in certain ways, where it's like it's definitely not as um if you like iron man 3 or even like the first thor movie or iron man 2 but i do think again it's one of the weaker mcu movies i gotta say i mean i think um there's definitely better mcu movies in phase two than this one and there's definitely worse movies than this one so i would give ant-man about two stars out of four okay so anyway that's our thoughts on phase two of the marvel cinematic universe Tune in to next time where we talk about, well, at least the majority so far of Phase 3 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is Tyler from Encoder Reviews. This is special guest Luke from the Not Backseat. Yep, and we hope you enjoyed this episode of After the Credits on Encoder Reviews, and we hope to make a lot more in the future. Please like and subscribe.